for today's lesson, we will be discussing the nth derivative of a function. This also means we will be discussing the higher order derivatives. So let's see what we mean by getting the higher order derivatives of a function. So when we take the derivative of the function f of x, the derivative f prime of x is called the first derivative. So let's say you have a function, you get the derivative of that. We call it as the first derivative. Now, taking the derivative of the first derivative would in turn give us the second derivative and so on. So, if you get the derivative of the first derivative, we call it as the second derivative. If you get the derivative of the second derivative, we call it as the third derivative and so on. So, this is what we call as the higher order derivatives of our function. So the concept behind this is that you are getting the derivative of the derivative of a specific function. So for the first derivative, we write this as like this, f prime of x. If you get putting two uh, symbols here, here for our f. And then for third derivative, for fourth, so it can be written as like that. Or we can just write this as like this one. Okay, so that is another way of writing uh, the derivatives. So that means uh, you have to get the fifth derivative of our function. Okay, so let's try with this example. So find the second derivative of f of x equals 5x cubed plus sine of x. So it was mentioned that we have to find the second derivative. That means after getting the first derivative, we still have to get the derivative of that. So let's try. So let's write first f of x equals 5x cubed plus sine of x. Okay, so let's now get the first derivative of our function. So 5x cubed, the derivative of this is 15x squared, and then plus sine x. So the derivative of sine is cosine of x. So that is already the first derivative. Now for the second derivative, we will be focusing on the first derivative. So we're getting the derivative of this one. So for the second derivative, so 15x squared, so this is just 30x plus cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine of x. So minus sine of x. So this is now the second derivative of our function. So again, what happened here is you get the you have the function, you get the first derivative, and to get the second derivative, first derivative of our function. Let's have another example. Find the fourth derivative of f of x equals 3 minus 2x raised to 4 plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 1. So we are going to find the fourth derivative. So that means we will be getting the derivative of our function four times. So let's start with the first function, or the function. f of x is equal to, let's just write it here, so that we can easily get the derivative. Minus 7x plus 1. Okay, so let's get first the first derivative. So for the first derivative, so this is 15x raised to 4 minus 8x cubed plus 10x minus 7. So this one now is the first derivative. So next, for the second derivative, so again, we have to look at the derivative of the first derivative. So this one is 60x cubed minus, and then we have 24x squared plus 10. So that is now the second derivative. Next, let's get the third derivative of our function. So to get the third derivative of our function, we have to get the derivative of the second derivative. So here we have 180x squared minus, and then 24 times 2 is 48, and then you have x. Okay, so this one now is the third derivative. And lastly, to get the fourth derivative, just get the derivative of the third derivative. So this is 360x minus 48. So there. So this is our fourth derivative of the given function. 
So as long as uh, your first derivative is correct, of course, it is really important that in the first one, your answer is already correct. Because if um, you have an error in the first derivative, of course, the rest will follow. Okay? So again, that is how we get the higher order derivatives. And let's try this one. Find the d squared y over dx squared. So this is another way of writing uh, second derivative. So that is also, or that refers also to second derivative. So this means we have to get now the second derivative of this function, x squared plus y squared equals x squared. Now, as you notice, this function is an implicit function because we have x and y variables um, on one side of the function. So that means we have to apply implicit differentiation. So let's do it. So it means we just have to get the derivatives of all of our terms. So y squared equals, uh, we have the d over dx, xy. All right. So remember, in implicit differentiation, whenever you take the derivative of a y term, you have to add or multiply dy over dx. So please take note of that. So here we have 2x plus and this one is 2y, but since this is a y term, we have to add dy over dx equals. And then for this, since this is x times y, so we have to use the product rule. So u dv, so this is our u, this is the v. So u is x times derivative of v. Our v is y, its derivative is 1, but we have to add the dy over dx, so it's just simply dy over dx plus v du y times du derivative of x is 1 and then just multiply this so you have the 2x plus 2y dy over dx equals x times dy over dx plus y and then the next thing that we have to do here is to isolate the terms with dy over dx so we have here 2y dy over dx minus x dy over dx equals y minus 2x. And then, we just have to factor the dy over dx. So, this is 2y minus x equals y minus 2x. And lastly, what we have to do is just to divide all of both sides of our function with 2y minus x. So let's just write here first so that you can see. So just divide both sides by 2y minus x. So 2y minus x cancelled. Therefore, the first derivative of our function is y minus 2x over 2y minus x. So again, that is the first derivative, but we need the second derivative. So let's continue. Now, since we already have the first derivative here, we need to get the second derivative. So for the second derivative, since as you can see, uh, we have here a numerator, denominator. It is in fraction form. That means we have to use the quotient rule. So this is high and then this is our low. So let's use the quotient rule here, low. Low d high minus high d low all over low squared 2y minus x squared and then let's simplify this or get the derivative 2y minus x now since here it still involves a y term so we still have to apply implicit differentiation so don't forget that so here we have y minus 2x its derivative is dy over dx minus 2 minus and then we have the y minus 2x and then this one its derivative is 2 dy over dx minus 1 all over then you still have the 2y minus x squared now from here 
As you can see, we have the dy over dx, so it's kind of confusing. So what we will do is, we will replace it. So take note, dy over dx is just the same as y prime, so they are just the same. To make it a bit simple, so instead of writing the dy over dx, we're going to write y prime. So let's just change all of the terms with dy over dx with y prime. Okay, so that you will not be overwhelmed with seeing fractions over a fraction. So there. Alright, so after that, the next thing that we have to do is to multiply the numerator. So we have to simplify our numerator. So we will be applying the FOIL method in our numerator. So what we will do here is we will just multiply the numerator using FOIL method. So like that. So 2y times y prime, that is 2y y prime. 2y times negative 2, negative 4y. And then this one, negative xy prime. And positive 2x. For this one, um, we write first the minus sign and then we put it inside the parentheses first. So, do the same thing. 2y, y prime. This is negative y. We have negative 4 x, y prime. And positive 2x. All over 2y minus x squared. Then, for the numerator, before we simplify this, let's distribute the negative sign here first to all of the terms. So this will become minus 2y y prime plus y plus 4xy prime minus 2x. And then from here, you can already simplify. So see if we can cancel out some terms. So here we have the 2yy prime and negative 2yy prime. So that will be just 0. What else? We have the 2x and the negative 2x. And the rest, um, we can identify here similar terms. So we can combine them. So we have negative 4y plus y. So that is negative 3y. And then we have the negative xy prime plus 4xy prime. So that will give us positive 3xy prime over 2y minus x squared. Okay? Now after that, since we have here the y prime, so we cannot just leave it as like that since we know the value of y prime, which is the first derivative. Okay, so what we will do is we have to replace this one, the y prime, with the first derivative. So, let's just write here uh, the negative 3y plus 3xy prime over 2y minus x squared. So, like, unlike with uh, the normal implicit differentiation wherein we isolate the term with y prime, this time we will substitute the y prime. So, negative 3y plus 3x multiplied to y prime. Again, y prime is just our first derivative. So, this is y minus 2x over 2y minus x. All over the denominator, which is 2y minus x squared. Now, to remove the denominator in our numerator, so we can just simply multiply both sides or both the numerator and the denominator with 2y minus x so that we can remove the denominator. So by multiplying that, so we can also multiply the negative 3y with our 2y minus x. And then for this one, this will be cancelled. And then it will be left with the 3x times y minus 2x. And then for our denominator, since they are just the same, so that means we will just change the exponent. So we have 2, 2y minus x here. Then there's another one. So we have now 2y minus x cubed. And then last is we just have to simplify this. So we'll multiply also this one right here so you have negative uh, 6y squared 
plus 3x y and then plus 3xy minus 6x squared all over the denominator which is 2y minus x cubed. And just combine similar terms. So finally, our answer will be negative 6y squared plus 6xy minus 6x squared all over 2y minus x cubed. So that will be our second derivative of our function. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the higher order derivatives, how to identify them, and see you next time.